Sometimes when people ask me what I do for a living, I might say I write books and I do speeches for a living. But I've learned to say instead, have you ever attended a class or a session where somebody was in the front of the room and they said something uh, that made you think or they gave you some nugget that you took away from there and maybe it only made a little difference in your life, but maybe it also made a big difference in your life. That's what I do for a living. When I meet people, sometimes I don't ask them about what they do for a living. I say, what do you do for fun? And we are such an overworked society. I mean, our, our work has taken over our lives. I'm always encouraging people to play and to keep, if they have something that they play, like for me it's disc golf, that they keep it fun and, and not make it work. The way I got into disc golf was after, after giving up horses, I wanted a sport. I wanted something that I could do just about anywhere. And a friend of mine was playing disc golf and he taught me how to throw. And then I found out that there was the beginning of a women's disc golf league in Lansing. And I was the very first woman to sign up. And that was 14 years ago. For the last 40 years, I've been a lifelong learner. I, I love reading and learning about new things. And so disc golf is some, it's a sport that I play and I'm continually learning how to do little things better. That's a kind of sideline from the professional work I do. One of the first things I have to say is I am not a natural athlete. I have the brain of an athlete, I want to be great. My body is like made up of a committee and all the parts don't show up for the event. Something I've practiced in my own life is learning to be self-encouraging. We can look in a mirror and what we see are all of our flaws or we try to do something like I might in my disc golf game throw into the water and lose my disc or throw into a thicket of trees that I have to crawl into and it takes me four throws to get out. So we all have these disastrous moments and I've learned to either laugh at myself, I call myself Charlesy when I'm trying to be self-encouraging and say, it's okay, next throw, you could do this. In fact, I say to myself, I can do this. And I usually have this sort of motion as if to banish the negative and open the space up for the positive. I brought in a disc to demonstrate what they look like. This is not a Frisbee. It's a lot thinner than a Frisbee. It's made to sail through the air as, as far as, as you can. And this happens to be a disc I don't use anymore because on the back of it, there are some, some words written. In ball golf, in regular golf, it's called a hole in one. In disc golf, it's called an ace. I threw 164 feet right from my hand into the basket that we throw in. This was just before a tournament, so it didn't count in my score, which is too bad, but it still is an ace. So that was my first accomplishment, and that was in 2010. In 2008, with this same disc, I broke a world record distance throw for women in my age category. I was looking at a website called the World Flying Dif Disc Federation, and they have world record throws from the age of one to 100. And I happened to notice that there was this woman in Australia who had held a world record, and I looked at the distance and I thought, I can do that. So in Hudson Mills, in Dexter, on the 12th of July, 2008, I submitted paperwork for wanting to break the world record, and by golly, I did. I, my throw was 185 feet. For me, that was, well, a moment. And I still happen to hold the world record. I check once a year, and so far, so good. And I also won one women's national championships. This year, I came in second out of a field of three, but I 
had some really good throws. I had surgery two years ago, so I'm just coming back for, for my game. It all has to do with the mind, for sure. Be as compassionate and kind with yourself as you are with everyone else. And there's always time to be kind, especially to ourselves.